You're probably wondering why we're even bothering to review Tales of Exilia 2. Let's be honest, it came out a few weeks ago and, well, it's a sequel to a JRPG. I'm probably just going to say the same things I said about the, the same one last time. I mean, you're probably better off just watching the video we made last year because it's probably a bit funnier as well. But, you know what? Let's do it anyway. I've bought it, haven't I? £40. I'm not going to see that back, am I? Tales of Exilia 2 follows on one year after the end of Tales of Exilia 1 and you know what, the story in this game is a vast improvement over the last game. You know why? Because I can fucking explain what happens in it. In the game, you go a man called Luger Kresnik, who's been tasked to essentially dive into these fractured dimensions. So these are offshoots of the main prime dimension, which the main game is set in, where one thing is different and that one thing that's different is destroying the main universe so you have to go in and destroy it for the most part these are just the kind of big setups for boss battles but it works quite well and it's got some great wee moments involved in that because for the most part you're teamed up with a lot of the main characters from the previous game so Jude, Mila, Alvin so something very comforting to come back to them it's a bit like eating a big bowl of mashed potato yeah sure there's better things to eat but something deep down is comfort you're back again, you're retreading some of the same paths, in fact in Tales of Exilia 2 literally retreading the same paths. Something that I enjoy, especially something that a lot of RPGs don't really do anymore, have direct sequels like that and it's, I don't know, nice. Now, probably one of the big things about Tales of Exilia 2, and it's one of the things that will probably put the majority of folk off buying it, is, well, apart from the fact it's a JRPG, it's, it's not an easy game. To get into. Now I loved Tales of Exilia 1 and actually I, I really enjoyed Tales of Exilia 2 but there's so many barriers they're putting up to stop your enjoyment. Now as I was talking about in the story you get lumbered with a big debt right near the beginning. That debt is crippling. You end up with such a vast amount that you need to pay off in order to progress the story. So that's how they do it. They kind of block off bits of the story and your progression by having this big debt and it just becomes grinding. Okay, maybe they're disguising the fact it's grinding a wee bit, but you can't help feel that there's a really great short GRPG in Tales of Exilia 2 that's been artificially extended to justify the fact that it's not just DLC to to justify the fact that it's a £40 game. If arena fighting doesn't get your blood boiling, you're dead inside. Now, I don't like to think that everything is doom and gloom when it comes to Tales of Exilia 2. It's really not. And in fact, the game has some amazing changes in it that I would like to see kind of move on beyond this game into the, the next Tales games. Now, the first big one, I suppose, is the changes to the combat. Now, the combat system is one of my favourites, to be honest. I mean, I love the Tales of games because they're really fast and quite immediate. In this game they change it up so that now the main character can swap between different weapons. So you start out with two swords, then you move on to two pistols, and then you get a sledgehammer and you can swap between them on the fly. Some enemies, oh, he's weak to a sledgehammer, oh, he's weak to pistols. So you get to move it around a wee bit, though I don't quite get how one enemy can be immune to a sledgehammer because it's a sledgehammer. The story itself and the way it pans out can actually change ever so slightly. You do have conversation options where you can either come off like a really nice guy or just quite a nice guy. Which, let's be honest, it's no fucking mass effect here, but it's a wee change. And you get some extra wee details about the characters. Some of the cutscenes even change. You get wee exclusive character scenes as well when you've built up the relationship. And you know what? Wee changes like that make this feel worth it. Because I think without changes, this game would feel a wee bit like Daylight Robberies, especially considering it's a full price game and all the assets have been used already in another full price game from a year ago. Moving beyond that, the main character of Lure Kresnik is a wee bit different as well from the previous game. The previous Tales games have always been, the main characters have been really chatty. In this, a lot of the chat has been moved on to just about everyone else, and Luger Kresnik almost seems like a completely silent protagonist, except for the occasional time that he does actually say something and it throws you off because you're not expecting it. During a cutscene he'll pipe up and say something like, well, okay then. And you're like, fuck, I forgot he could even speak. Seriously? Tales of Exilia 2 is a difficult game to recommend. On one hand, I love the feeling of going back and revisiting areas and characters that I loved in Tales of Exilia 1 and the story in this game is much easier to follow and way more entertaining but it's just the barriers they put up make it difficult. They make it difficult for new players to enjoy. They make it difficult for folk who love Tales of Exilia 1 to really get into the flow 
of this game and GRPGs in general aren't the easiest genre to recommend because people have it in their mind there's going to be all these barriers, all this grinding and this is a game that really, that really proves that. You know what, if you've played Tales of Exilia 1, like me, you're probably going to enjoy this game with the caveats I've said. If you've not played a GRPG before or you've not played one in a while and you're looking for the next Chrono Trigger or the next Final Fantasy 7, this isn't the game for you. It's good fun, but you know what? Could be better.